Have you ever been so angry that you wanted to punch the wall? Oh my goodness, I definitely have been there and done that and have the drywall patch to prove it. In this episode, we are gonna talk about what is going on in your brain when you get angry because there is stuff that gets us angry every single day, right? And what you can do about it. I'm gonna tell you what happens in your brain when you are able to release that anger, which it's all good things. And I am gonna give you some techniques that are based in science and based in scripture to help you with this. I'm Dr. Darlene Mayo. I am a neurosurgeon and a neuroscientist, and I help high achievers just like you reach peak performance of mind, body, and spirit using groundbreaking techniques in both science and scripture so you can unlock your full potential. All right, so let's get to it today. So yeah, this story is actually true. I had to go to Home Depot one day. I don't even remember what I was angry about at the time, but it caused me to put a hole in the wall. And I had to tell the worker, yeah, the hole in the wall, it's this big. He said, I hope I never make you angry. <laughs> so funny story, right? But not so funny when you find out what is going on in your brain, okay? So when you get angry, here's what happens to your brain. Number one, you release a stress chemical called cortisol, all right? Cortisol, it does many things, including producing toxins in your brain. People that are chronically angry, all right, have serious issues, health issues even, all right, including high blood pressure, higher chance of heart disease, increased pain, all right? A lot of this stems from the toxins produced not only in your brain, but in your body as well. Also, if you've been following my page for a while, you know that when you have cortisol in your brain, what don't you have? You are missing your happiness neurochemicals. Your dopamine goes down, your serotonin goes down. This can lead to depression. This can lead to problems with your memory even, right? So we want to avoid that, but here is the absolute worst thing that anger does to your brain. Actually, Anger causes your brain to essentially become stagnant or get stuck in certain patterns, right? It starts rehearsing over and over again the things that made you angry and you start forming these pathways in your brain that are very negative. You've been angry before, you know what I'm talking about. Don't you revisit that conversation you had or that person that cut you off in traffic. You get to work and you tell your coworkers, I can't believe this happened and you keep ruminating over it, right? Every time you think about that thing, every time you talk about it, it is teaching your brain to stay in a state of anger, right? Which is leading to more of the toxins, more of the stress neurochemicals, and an inability to get things done. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time that you were angry that you were actually able to accomplish something right after that? Okay, so I know for me, if I'm angry, there is no producing anything, right? So think about that for yourself. And this is also scriptural, guys, okay? Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verse 28, it teaches us, right? Holding on to anger leads to death, all right? That's pretty serious, and it's actually true. It is backed up by medical science. So let's talk about how we get over being angry. You may not like the answer, but it's on the board behind me, okay? The way to get over being angry is to forgive, all right? Forgiveness is actually medicine for your soul. If you had a sickness, if you had a disease, some sort of illness, would you not take medicine for your physical body? Okay, well, when you're angry, you need medicine for your soul. That is an injury to your soul, actually, and forgiveness is the way to heal your soul, all right? So I am going to give you some techniques in just a minute, but to tell you about the brain science behind forgiveness, essentially it is doing the opposite of what anger is doing. So it is increasing your dopamine, happiness, motivating brain chemicals, increasing your serotonin, which helps your memory, increasing your oxytocin, which is your ability to trust, to love, to bond, and to create new things, all right? 
forgiveness activates the cortex, the top part of your brain that is so creative and that is responsible for um, higher order thinking, right? So when you're not using your cortex, what are you using? You're using the base of your brain that is essentially just trying to keep you alive. That's just the part of your brain that helps to keep your heart beating, your lungs breathing, all right? So you are not able to actually do anything else other than just the basics of staying alive when you're in anger. But when you forgive, activating that cortex and able to do all the amazing things that you were created to do. All right, now I am going to give you a technique that is very cool to help with forgiveness because the idea of forgiveness, obviously we have talked about how incredibly important that is, right? But it can be hard. I mean, I know I get angry when somebody does something to offend me, right? Or maybe says something mean. I get angry and I have to learn how to let that go and sometimes that can be really hard. There is this really, really cool technique and it's simply creating a picture in your mind, okay, that is going to help you to forgive the other person and let go of your anger, all right? Do you want to hear what that is? So that technique, it is called visualization, all right? And it is based on activating a part of the brain. It is called the mirror neuron network. This is the part of your brain that cannot tell the difference between something that you imagine and something that has actually happened. So even if you can forgive somebody in your mind, it treat your brain treats it the exact same way as if you looked at them and said I forgive you so 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 powerful right because sometimes if we're angry at somebody you know we don't even have an opportunity to speak to them and even if we did speak to them our uh, saying I forgive you they may not be sorry for it but your brain has the ability to allow you to reap the benefits of forgiveness whether the other person accepts it or not. How incredible is that? So here's what you do, all right? So you are going to form in your mind, you're gonna close your eyes, form in your mind a picture of this person that you are angry with, right? And I am gonna have you imagine them talking not to you, but talking to God, okay? And I am gonna have you imagine them telling God what they did, all right, to hurt you and to say to God, I'm sorry, all right? Now, here's what you're gonna imagine is that God is telling them, I forgive you, all right? I see the pain that you're going through that caused you to act that way, that caused you to say that thing, to do that thing that was not so kind, right? When you are able to visualize this interaction between this person that made you angry and God, it takes you out of the picture. It takes your emotions out of the picture. But one of the beautiful things that it does is it's actually teaching your brain that this person is being forgiven. All right, it's so, so powerful. And that makes it really so much easier for you to forgive them. So once you go through that visualization, then you can actually see that person turning around and looking at you, saying they're sorry, and see yourself telling them, I forgive you too, all right? And that's it, it takes just a few seconds, but it is incredibly powerful for you. Now, what is the scriptural basis for visualization, right? Because I get this question a lot. Well, actually, visualization is used throughout the Bible. I have a whole course I teach on that. But for these purposes, I wanted to share with you two particular instances where visualization is used relating to forgiveness. So the first is when Jacob was... Um, approaching Esau, right? Remember, they'd gotten into that huge fight and he was upset. Esau was upset because Jacob had stolen his birthright. And so Jacob was worried that Esau was coming to kill him. So he was actually thinking over and over in his mind, what can I do to help Esau to forgive me? And that's why he presented him with all those gifts, right? So the second time is, well, there's many instances, but the second one that I am going to bring up to you is in the New Testament. And this is when Jesus is telling the parable about the prodigal son. Now, when the prodigal son got through with his 
philandering and was coming back home. He actually rehearsed in his mind, which is visualization, activating the mirror neuron network that we've been talking about, right? And he rehearsed in his mind exactly what he was going to say to his father. My father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, right? And he said those exact words when he ran into his father. So he used this process for prepping himself for forgiveness, right? So there is a scriptural basis and a scientific basis for using visualization to forgive and to get over anger. I am putting together right now a course on anger and how to use both science and scripture to help you heal from anger, to release your anger so that you can live the fulfilling life you want. Uh, there will be a link to that below this video. I hope that that was a helpful technique for you. Please uh, comment, please like and share this video if you found this helpful and we will see you back soon with some more tips.